Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I believe you can make the money and you can get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And it is my goal to bring you the information and the conversations to help you do just that. And today we are joined by Mrs. O, a.k.a. Fallon (laughs) Oten, who is the epitome of having it all. She's making the money. She's got the honey. She's balancing mommyhood, even though, you know, we all know that balance is kind of BS, but we're going to get into it today. (laughs) Um, But although Fallon is an HR practitioner by day, she is also an entrepreneur and a blogger. She strives to live each day with an attitude of service and operating in her God-given gifts. She is a woman of faith, a wife, a bonus mom to triplets, and a mother to her 18-month-old son, Duke. Her passions are health and beauty, helping others, and fashion. As a wife and a mother, she is passionate about helping others, particularly women, postpartum. Although useful across the spectrum, she has created the Get Up and Get Unstuck Planner with mothers in mind to help them meet their goals and keep track of life's many demands. So y'all know I'm all about like putting pen to paper, making note Mm -hmm. of all of the things, trying to track all of the things, personally working on my time management. So definitely excited to talk about this planner and how it can be beneficial to other um, women or moms out there. But before we get into that, Fallon, I want to talk about like your your beginning. So I'm assuming Mm -hmm. that you were a wife before a mom. Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. I just put up a post on my Instagram, like literally 15 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. a conversation around it was like a true or false question do women prefer or prioritize being a mom or being a wife so i just want to start there by just getting (laughs) your yeah let's get into it i want to get your feedback on that like based on you and then based on like the women that you know what do you feel like is the biggest priority you know and as you said it is it's a true juggle and it is a struggle I try to prioritize being a wife because I understand that my child, our child is going to grow up or our children are going to grow up and they're going to go on and lead their own lives. And we need to continue to work on our relationship throughout the years and over the years, uh, even leading up to that point. But, you know, it's tough because you also have this little person that calls you mommy and depends on you and needs so much from you. And it's hard to kind of turn that off or feel like, you know, you you shouldn't be doing for them and you're trying to do for your husband as well. So, you know, I, I do my best um, to prioritize whoever needs me most at the time. Let me, let me put it like that. Just let me reverse that answer. Whatever I need to be doing at the time, whoever needs me most is who I try to prioritize. And maybe that's not the right answer. Or maybe there is no right answer. Maybe it's what works best for the individual, but I do try to, I try to keep the marriage a priority too. I do. Listen, I, so I don't think that there is a right answer. I, I definitely mm-hmm. agree with you that it's literally, it's not even a day by day. It's like a minute by minute, moment, exactly. uh, moment exactly. by moment. Like who needs me right now in this moment? Who is the mm-hmm. priority right now? And as the wife and the mom, mm-hmm. um, it's a lot. It's a big responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I know for mm-hmm. me, you know, like for years, I have talked about prior to meeting my husband for years, I've talked about wanting to be a wife. For years, I've talked Mm -hmm. about wanting to be a mother. And Mm -hmm. I am definitely blessed, but it Mm -hmm. is a job. Like it is not, you know, just like the rainbows and butterflies and fairy tales that I was expecting or hoping Mm -hmm. it to be. And so Mm -hmm. being able to manage and maintain both of those roles, in addition to like the household, which is a whole nother thing, in addition Mm -hmm. to like me as an individual, Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like we got to start having these conversations around like what it's really like, how you can prepare. Um, So prior to you getting married, what were you looking forward to most being a wife or being a mother? You know, I would have to say really both, you know, they were both really things that I had on my vision board, really things that I really wanted to, to be and become, you know, I like to be a homemaker. I'm a servant, you know? So I just, Oh, maybe that wasn't right. We're going to edit this. (laughs) <laughs> nope, nope, we real and raw. That might have been if that's how you feeling. 
Listen, I guess so. I guess so. And call it whatever we want, but we do a lot of service. Well, and that's true. And I guess that's what I mean. I didn't want the word servant to be taken out of context or taken the wrong way as to what I meant by that. People people take stuff out of context all all day long. So we ain't going to worry about that. But we are very much so in service. Absolutely. We are. We are. And I appreciate you understanding what I mean by that, you know, um, just in, in a way of being a, as a, a service, you know, a servant to your family. You know, the things that we do, I'm in service to my son. I'm in service to my husband, to my family and um, even in service in my business. You know, I'm looking to see how I can serve others. So I use that term broadly and generally in all the roles that I play in my life. So that's what I meant by that. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I was looking forward to you know, we all, I, well, a lot of us have that fairy tale kind of, you know, you want that love and that romance. I was looking forward to being a wife, to kind of having that person that you could spend your life with, having that life partner um, that you could be with. And then also, you know, being a mother here again, I, I like, you know, I'm a caretaker. I'm a nurturer uh, by nature. So, you know, I was looking forward to having, you know, that little person to call me mommy and just have that whole experience of being mm-hmm. a mom. So they were both pretty equal, I'd have to say. Gotcha. Okay. Great answer. Um, great answer for sure. And I can definitely attest to that. I didn't want one without the other. Like yeah. that, that was what was important for me. Like I, yeah. I didn't know what being a mommy was like, but I knew I did right. not want to find out on my own. I, yeah. <laughs> I knew that I needed some help figuring that thing out. Yeah, um, so, so you mentioned your vision board. I do want to touch on that a little bit because we talk a lot mm-hmm. about the law of attraction and visualization Mm -hmm. and the power of your words. How do you believe that you having a vision board and, you know, knowing what you wanted and being intentional, how do you think that that helps you to be able to manifest both? Well, I think that it helps you kind of know what kind of decisions you need to make that are aligned with where you want your life to go. So if what's coming to you doesn't look like what you want, you know, to say no to that. And kind of say yes to more so the things that that are align in alignment with mm-hmm. where you want your life to be headed, and that's that's kind of what it did for me. Kind of seeing those pictures gave me a depiction of okay, these are the things that I want to do, um, or this is kind of what I'm aspiring to. So um, this is the these are the type of things, the type of decisions I need to make need to be in alignment uh, yes. with that. Yes, I think that's the that's definitely um, a part that I think a lot of people uh, overlook. And mm-hmm. that's why, you know, we make these vision boards year after year. You've been making vision boards for 10 years, but the vision hasn't come to life yet because mm-hmm. a lot of times the decisions that you make, the actions that you take, the thoughts that you think, the words that you speak are not in alignment with those things. So you set this very clear picture, mm-hmm. but then you're still entertaining things and thoughts that are not in alignment with it and wondering why, you know, you're not actually manifesting the things that you um, that you seek. So mm-hmm. I love that. And I love that you mentioned it. I do want to ask you, you know, I, we, we like to get in your business just a little bit. So what, what <laughs> that I wanted to ask you before we talk about this bonus mommy life <laughs> as a single mother, I mean, mm-hmm. as a single woman, I'm sorry, as mm-hmm. a single woman, did you have preferences around dating or marrying a man with children? You know, for, I was kind of open to it. It just depends. It depended. Okay. You know, it kind of depended on what else he may have brought to the table or what kind of person he was. I wouldn't say that I was kind of an all or nothing, but, you know, as you're stating, you know, as a single woman that didn't have kids and things like that, you know, I, I, I kind of was with, I guess I did have in my mind a little bit like, well, I could kind of be discriminating. I don't necessarily just, you know, have to go one way or the other, but it just kind of depended on the individual, I'd have to say. And and so what has that experience been like for you? Because you didn't just step into the role of being a bonus mom to one baby. You got, you just a triple threat over there. You are bonus mom, instantly three kids. How was that transition from zero to three? You know, it was, uh, it was quite a transition. And, you know, in some ways it's, it's still kind of a transition. You know, my husband and I have not been married for very long. We got married in 2020. So okay. we're coming up on three years in March, but it hasn't been that long. Um, but we, we've just been through a lot in a short amount of time. But um, but no, it, it definitely was a transition. Um, you know, it's when you're kind of married to the husband that doesn't have the custody, they're not in our care, you know, full time. So I think mm-hmm. that also would have looked very different. 
um, as to, you know, you get them on your weekends, you get them on your holidays. Um, but it definitely made me kind of step up. I had to rise to the occasion um, and become that bonus mom. You know, um, I try to approach it in such a way as to just thinking about how I can add value to their lives. You know, um, they have a mother. So I, I definitely pay deference and defer to her as the mother. Uh, but me as the bonus mom, you know, how can I add value? How can I make a positive influence on these young lives um, and be whatever it is that they need me to be? Um, so it really it was char it's character building for me um, to, like you say, have to step up and step into that role and, you know, plan the meals, get the groceries, you know, for more than just me and my husband. Now I got to think about, OK, what do at the time I think they were like 14 or going on 14. So what do 14 year olds eat? What do they like? You know, what am I what do I need to cook? You know, so it just kind of it gave me it was just an opportunity. I saw it as an opportunity um, to help me to get better, to be better. And like I said, to rise to the occasion. And I, it, it was kind of like a test run for having your own kids. Yeah, too. absolutely. I mean, like built in, like on the job training for when you, you know, became a, a full time mother, you know, because mm -hmm. the I, and this is another like tricky kind of conversation. I have, you know, I'm in all of these like Facebook groups, these mommy groups, and I have seen women who co-parent so they you know mm -hmm. they don't live together with the father of the kids I have seen them talking about the plus side of that like the benefits of that having their weekends off you know mm -hmm. being able to have that built-in free time that you can depend on mm -hmm. and so that's something that I I never thought about you know we think yeah. about like the single mom struggle but we don't mm -hmm. ever really think about you know the that there are some benefits if you have a co-parent you know now yeah, if you're just sure. single mom by yourself yeah. God bless your soul. But mm -hmm. being able to, you know, kind of it's not part time, but sharing those responsibilities and having that built in free time. Um, I do definitely think that it's a different experience from baby in the house full time. Um, and so I could just imagine that it was it was helpful to be mm -hmm. able to kind of practice and then send these babies back to back to <laughs> mama. Um, but 14, yeah. so I always said I did not. I, I was very clear about, you know, not wanting to marry a man that had kids. However, mm -hmm. when 30 came around, yeah, it's I said I started to look around, you know, it yeah. was like, okay, I don't want to quote unquote settle for something that I, you know, that isn't like my ideal, but right. I gotta be realistic. You know, I yeah. gotta I gotta start considering the fact that that might not just be the end all be all. Like if this man mm -hmm. comes with all of the other things, he just happens to have right. children already. Like I I'm weighing the options now. And so I do think that, again, these are conversations that we need to have because True. you don't want to block your blessings or miss out on the man that God yeah, has for you man. because you are inside of, inside of this box. Um, but I do think, you know, the visualization, the being intentional, the knowing what mm -hmm. you want, all of that is super important, but being flexible mm -hmm. too, I think Absolutely. for sure is important. Yeah. So no, I, do, I, oh, I agree. I couldn't agree more. I was just gonna say I couldn't agree more. You hit it on the head. Okay, so I want to get into your um your mission, I guess, and your passion for assisting women postpartum. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to talk, of course, about your your postpartum experience. Again, the whole goal of this show is like having the conversations that need to be had. They're not always, they're not always like the fun and exciting and, you know, the things that we want to talk about, but I want to, I want to talk about the things that we need to talk about. And Absolutely. for me, um, someone who did look forward to becoming a mom for as long as I can remember since I was a little girl with baby dolls. Like this was mm -hmm. something that I knew I was never the person that said I didn't want kids and just yeah. ended up having, kids. I knew that I wanted to be a mom. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of what postpartum really was outside mm -hmm. of what I saw on TV. I had not had these conversations with my mom or my aunts or my cousins right. or my friends. Um, and it wasn't until I had my baby. Mm hmm. And then I was like, okay, wait, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what is, what is this that I'm feeling? Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, postpartum, we, we talk about postpartum depression. There's also postpartum anxiety. You know, there's, there's like a, a, a scale, you know, it's a range of emotions. Um, but I, I think it's super important that we have these conversations about different experiences and how 
postpartum can show up differently or how that season can be different, you know, for different people. So tell me a little bit about your postpartum experience and what created like this passion for you to assist other women. Yes. Well, and because as you state, you know, it's something that we don't really talk about. You know, you don't really know it until you go through it for yourself. Um, and I just kind of had a a difficult postpartum journey, I'll say. I'll put it that way. It was a little challenging. Um, I had my baby and then, you know, thought everything was good, you know, thought that I had I was in the clear from preeclampsia or anything like that because I've already given birth. So why would I have to deal, you know, why would that be an issue? Um, but come to find out about two weeks after I had my son, um, I was experiencing swelling in my feet and I just kind of thought it was uh, just because I just had a baby and I was I had swelling throughout my pregnancy. Um, my blood pressure was fine throughout my pregnancy. I didn't have any issues. Um, I didn't have any issues after giving birth. You know, they take your blood pressure around the clock after you give birth for these reasons. And it was fine. So I was not thinking that this this could be, you know, an issue for me as to why I was having this swelling. But um, come to find out it was. And I'm grateful that I had a blood pressure cuff at home and I was able to take my blood pressure. Um, I had it. I got it when I was pregnant and uh, I would encourage any pregnant woman to have one on hand. Um, and then after having the baby, um, a good friend nurse recommended I take my blood pressure because of the swelling and come to find out it was like through the roof. Um, and so I had to go to the ER and um, be separated from my child. You know, he's two weeks old and you're already experiencing. I think even right after he was born, I experienced all kind of I was in the hospital just already like emotional and crying and just overwhelmed uh, by this little life that I was trying to care for. You know, I'm thinking, well, I'm the mama, so I'm supposed to be doing all these things. I'm supposed to be his everything and I'm supposed to know everything and I'm supposed to. So I was putting a lot of pressure on myself as well. Um, but it was just an overwhelming time, an overwhelming experience. He had jaundice. It was just a lot going on at the time. And then on top of that, um, dealing with my own health issues, um, having to have been hospitalized for about five days um, and be away from him and not really understanding what's going on. I was just totally blindsided by it. I didn't know what was going on. I know how blood pressure is not a good thing. Um, I know, you know, you can have a stroke. I knew I had some base level knowledge that this is not good, but um, just having to be separated from him. It was late at night. I had to leave him and I'm in the hospital and I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's happening. Um, and they're telling me, well, this happens sometimes. And, you know, some women go through this, but you're kind of like, but OK, but, you know, what? I just I felt like I needed more explanation or what's going on with my body. Um, and then to hear the next morning after I had been admitted that it was postpartum preeclampsia, you're like, wow, you know, I don't, I, it's what, you know, like you feel like that's not talked about a lot or uh, people don't always share that, you know, you think of postpartum, you see women with their babies and you're smiling and you're holding a new baby and everything's great. Um, but there's also this other side, you know, to postpartum and being a mom and it is great and wonderful and it is a blessing. All the things that you said, it's all of that. Uh, but then there also can be, you know, some challenges, some dif difficulties that we face that we don't always talk about. And that's why it's so important to me to share my story. Uh, one, I want women to know what to look for, um, because I don't think I was quite on, quote unquote, a likely candidate for mm -hmm. something like this. So you just never know, you know, and I don't I don't want anyone else to feel as blindsided as I felt um, in those moments of having to deal with this health issue that comes as a result of having a baby. Um but I do want women to just be aware, to know, and to know that they're not alone. Because I felt very alone. I felt like, I just felt like everybody else could get it together but me. Like, I'm dealing with this health issue. I got this new baby. I feel like I'm the only one experiencing this. And come to find out, as I started sharing my story, more and more women were like, oh, yeah, I had that or I dealt with that. I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, you went through that or I didn't know this was a thing. Um, and so it's just so important to me to just share um, and to be open and honest so that other women know that they're not alone. Um, that postpartum can be a bit of a struggle mm -hmm. um, and, and to also just know what to look for to take care of yourself because our babies need us and the world does too. Okay. So you're going to think that I'm lying. Y'all, I ain't, I never talked about this because I, I say I got PTSD. Okay. I still have not <laughs> shared my full story. I made it maybe three days mm -hmm. after having my son had a lactation consultant who was also a nurse come to the house the moment she saw my swollen ankles mm. was like, girl, sit mm. down. Let me take your blood pressure. Mm. Literally exact same scenario. Really? She's like, these, look at these numbers. You know, I need for you to call your doctor. As soon as I called the doctor and told them what the numbers were, they sent me immediately 
to the mm-hmm. hospital where mm-hmm. I had to stay for an entire week. Wow. And literally, like when I tell you, your story is my story and 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 we don't even know each other. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. imagine how many other women are out mm-hmm. there that have experienced this. There is nothing, there's nothing that can make you feel better when you're alone in a yeah. hospital with your new baby that you just met days ago. Right. Without you, you know, like because mm-hmm. during my, during my pregnancy and you probably, you know, experienced this, too. We talk so much about like the skin to skin contact and how important, mm-hmm. it is, you know, those first few hours and days and weeks and just that bonding experience and to mm-hmm. have to be powerless yeah. and voiceless mm-hmm. and really like out of control in this process. Um that, that it was literally one of the most traumatizing things that I've that I've been through, and my husband can't be with me because he got to be at home with the baby. You know, mm-hmm. I'm bringing them to the hospital every day to see me, but talking about crying sad every time they had to leave, and you and there's nothing you could do about it because you know the 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 insurance that you have, the doctors that you whose care you're under, they have their different protocols. So right. until you meet these specific yeah. whatever's. They're yeah. not letting you go. You can't they don't care that you got a new baby at the house. That's right. And so that I'm so glad that you brought. I'm so glad that you you know are sharing your story because, like I said, I've never had the guts to share mine. <laughs> it, it it was truly been a traumatic experience for me yeah. because, like you said, you you just don't know. And mm-hmm. I never had high blood pressure. I like mm-hmm. not one high reading my entire mm-hmm. pregnancy, and so yeah. to be blindsided by that. And to be unprepared for that, I definitely right. think um, sharing our stories and talking about it, not to scare people, but just right. to bring awareness to awareness. what's possible. Um, and then, you know, there are like, quote unquote, preventative things. But this is one of those processes, like becoming a mother, mm-hmm. and all of the things that come along with it. This is one of those seasons that you just don't know what's going to happen, how mm-hmm. it's going to go. Um, and it's definitely, it can be emotional. Like it can be emotionally yes. draining, emotionally taxing. Yes. And so I can only imagine how these type of scenarios can send you into a depression or give you mm-hmm. anxiety around, mm-hmm. you know, what's going on for, with your baby that you can't be there. You know, like all of those mm-hmm. things. And so hopefully our uh, situations were extreme, you know, um, <laughs> hopefully this is right. not you know, happening left and right. But I do think regardless of how well your, your birthing process goes, your labor delivery, Mm -hmm. there are just so many unexpected things that could happen or, you know, that, that could pop up that we aren't necessarily in control with, in control of. Um, So what are some of the topics that you are talking about and sharing about on your blog? You know, uh, it's a lot about motherhood. Um, the most recent topics anyway, you know, postpartum, uh, just sharing my journey. Um, but also uh, just, you know, me and my son, you know, sharing about the birth and his delivery, um, a little bit about getting married. I, I kind of got married under wraps. It was a whole thing. Um, so that's out there, too. Um, and then my maternity shoot, because it's just, you know, I got married very quickly and then we had the baby, turned around, had the baby. So it's mainly just wife and motherhood. So you're going to tell us this got married very quickly story or we, we got to go to the blog to, to read about that? Oh, man. You know, I'm embarrassed in all honesty to yeah. share. Uh, but it's definitely it's on the blog. I'm, it's, I'm scrolling the blog now. They're going to say hello to Mrs. O.com. <laughs> so if you don't tell us, they're just going to go read about it. That is so true. That is so true. Well, I um, long story short, I was getting married, got engaged New Year's Eve of 20, 2019. Um, we planned the wedding for November 2020. And, you know, unbeknownst to all of us, COVID, we didn't know COVID was going to hit or that that was going to be a thing. So um, we really wanted to just go ahead and get married um, and then have the wedding later in November of 2020, but get married uh, on March 7th, which is the date that we did get married on. But my mother was like totally against it. I'm her baby child. And she was like, no, we're going to have this. No, you just having one wedding. And she was just she was just overwhelming me with her opinions and with her just like all out disregard for how I felt. So I just went ahead and my husband and I just got married with the triplets there. And um, I was like, we're going to still have our wedding in November and it will have everybody there. But again, I didn't, we didn't know that COVID, like literally we got married March 7th and then that week, everything just shut down. The world just stopped. 
So we ne- we still haven't had a wedding. And my mother is like just so done with us about this whole wedding thing. But, you know, in hindsight, I should have just stood up to her and said, hey, we're doing this. I want you to be there. I love you. I want you to come. Um, but I thought I could get away with it and still have a wedding later. But, you know, COVID had other plans. So <laughs> What is embarrassing about this? Which part of that makes you embarrassed? Because, you know, I'm a grown woman. And I should have just said mama. These mamas mama. got a hold on us, okay? Yes, they do. Yes, they, they do. They, they have a hold on us. Yes, and 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 get out of here, mama, because I'm living <laughs> this life, all right? I'm making the decisions based on my desires yes. and like you said i'm gr- I'm grown out here I'm i have grown. to be the one to live with these decisions but these exactly. mamas be having their own idea their own oh vision they, their own story they've been telling themselves and guess yeah. what they're gonna get over it so yeah, shout out to you. yeah well she kind of has because but... <laughs> what choice do you have ma'am like she has to move on you gotta move on you gotta move mm-hmm. on and yep. if we decide to have a wedding you'll be there if not hello it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I love that for you. Nothing to be embarrassed about because well, thank you. these I moms are having a stronghold. Okay. Yes, they do. Um, yes. Put it, putting off their their desires on us and mm-hmm. these husbands. I don't know about your husband, but my husband be like, "I love your mama, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we doing what we want to do over here. Like, stop yeah. playing, girl. Yeah. Stop playing." Girls, okay. <laughs> I want to get into this planner um, because when we talk about, again, we're not here to stress y'all out, okay? We're right. just here to give y'all a realistic um, view of like what mommy wife life really looks like and then literally finding yourself in the midst of it all. Like mm-hmm. becoming a wife is a responsibility. Becoming a mother mm-hmm. is like the responsibility of all responsibilities, but you still have you. Um, to take care of and to think about and to prioritize. And so you have the Get Up and Get Unstuck Planner. I want to know a little bit more about um, your vision for it. Like what what was your motivation behind creating it and how women can use it as a resource? Yes, ma'am. I, you know, after having my son and kind of going through all the postpartum and the, my own health I, um, ordeal, I, uh, I just, I literally, I felt stuck. You know, it took me a while. I think having a baby, you you have to regain your footing anyway, you know, even without having some of the health ordeals. Um, but especially in this case, trying to keep up with it all, trying to manage it all, going back to work uh, full time. Um, it was just a lot. And um, after a while, I just I just I just felt stuck. All I could do was take care of my son and me, <laughs> keep him alive, keep me going, you know, do the bare necessities of the day. Um, but how did how did I incorporate, you know, mopping the floor again and getting the laundry, getting everything done again? Like, how do I manage and balance all of this at the same time? Um, so I just felt stuck for a few months, you know. And I think that as a postpartum woman, don't get me wrong, I think you have to get to a point where you're ready. I think you do need to take a take a breath, take a beat, take a breath, and spend that time just just getting your footing with being a mom and understanding that role, even if it's adding another child, even if you're already a mom and you're adding another child, I think you have to kind of recalibrate. And I think you should take that time. But once you're ready to kind of start moving forward again, moving the needle again, setting your goals again, kind of going after the things that you're passionate about and getting your house back together, getting life back together. Um, you know, you need something to help you get unstuck. At least I did. So I felt like maybe if I did, maybe other women out there, other moms out there do too. Um, as you stated before, you know, it's a planner that I think could be used by anybody. You don't necessarily have to be a postpartum mom to use this, but I did create this with postpartum mothers in mind because it's what I needed when I was, you know, 12 months in and feeling like, okay, I think I'm getting this mommy thing down. Now let me figure out how to incorporate all the other things because adulting by itself is a whole thing. And then you add a kid in, it's like, how do I balance all of this? So yes. um, that's why I created the planner. Um, it's got pages where you just see your week at a glance. So you can see your grocery list, what chores I need to do, um, you know, what's on my to-do list for the week. Um, and then you can see your month at a glance so that you can kind of see the bigger picture and then your quarter at a glance. You know, what are my goals for Q1? And then January, February, March, what are the things I'm going to be doing in those months to hit that Q1 goal? So just kind of keeping track of it all. Because if, if, you, if you're like me, if you try to keep it in your head, you go, I, there are many things that I'm like, oh, I should have written that down. Because mm-hmm. if I don't write it down, it's not going to happen because I'm going to forget because it's right. just a lot to keep up with. So, And listen, when he, the older these kids get, when they start having schedules, 
and appointments mm-hmm. and all of the things. It's like yeah. if you if you didn't write it down, it, it ain't real. If I don't write it, it ain't really happening. Like I can't. I, it's not gonna happen. Don't ask me about it. And then on top of all of that, your husband is like, "Well, when are we doing?" Yeah, exactly, exactly. You gotta keep up with everything. Everybody, you have to. You gotta keep up with everything yeah. for everybody, yeah. and and try to squeeze in some things for yourself as for yourself. well. Um, so the get up and get going, right? Get up and get going. Get up and get unstuck. Unstuck. Uh-huh. Get, up and get unstuck planner. Where can they grab a copy of it? You know, it's on the blog. Uh, you go to say hello to Mrs. O.com. There's a there's a link to it there. Um, also, if you follow me on Instagram, there's a link on my Instagram bio. But my Instagram is hello to Mrs. O. Um, that's hello, the number two, uh, Mrs. Dot o. Um, and then there's a link to it on there as well. Well, I have truly enjoyed this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even know we was going to go there. I mean, you yeah. know. Like, we, I didn't even, know what I was signing up for, but I'm glad you showed <laughs> up. I'm glad we got to have this conversation. Yeah, and it, it truly is my purpose to be able to bring forth these conversations that can really uh, move the culture forward and move mm-hmm. our women specifically forward and not have them out here feeling like they're the only ones going through the only one. Absolutely. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing your story, you being transparent. I It, it actually helped me that you shared your story um, because you gave you gave life and birth to everything that I have felt and have been feeling. And again, you still feel like, well, maybe it's just me. Maybe someone else would have handled this better. But hearing you share that, I again, that that helped me. So thank you for that. <sighs> I, I, I wasn't planning on it. The people going to be in my comments like, girl, what? I, the people around me like still don't even know, you know, mm-hmm. my whole birth story because it was it was just traumatizing and traumatic. Mm-hmm. But you are encouraging me to start talking about it because mm-hmm. you can have all the plans in the world. You can have this picture perfect mm-hmm. idea of how things are going to happen. And God be like, no, sis, I got a yeah. lesson to teach you. I got a lesson. Right, exactly. Um, and, and, and us being able to share our stories we saving lives, you know, being able I to share. Because, so. you, you know, such as black women, you know, the maternal rate, um, the maternal death rate of black women, you know, I, it, it, of course, we're uh, disproportionately affected. Um, mm-hmm. So anything that I can do to help save a life or help somebody else, because like I said, that last night could have been my last night. I was about to go to bed, you right. know, with my blood pressure through the roof, roof not knowing. I so. had no clue because you it no don't clue. feel like anything. You would never know. One like of my it, nurses said that to me. She says it's a silent killer. I say I see, I could see because I it wasn't like I felt bad or anything like that. I really didn't. So <sighs> scary times. Yeah, scary times. But, but God, but God. It, right? But God, blessings to anybody out there expecting, uh, preparing okay. for pregnancy, all of the things. Um, yeah. I am I'm I'm keeping y'all in my prayers, keeping myself Absolutely. in my prayers, Lord Absolutely. Jesus. Help us. Again, um, again, not to scare you, just know what to look for. Just, right, just, just know what to look for. Them ankles are the are the dead giveaway. And having a having a blood pressure monitor at home is definitely yeah. um helpful as well. So yes. y'all hit the replay on this episode. We have gotten into some juicy conversations. Um, <laughs> on another episode of the Girl Stop Playing podcast. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and I will see you on the next episode. Peace out.